thank you uh, for the opportunity to um, share some of the work we're doing here at ITW um, for uh, concerning multi-physics simulation in food equipment development. So I thought that I would start out um, basically introducing ITW and uh, telling you a little bit about the IBEX oven, which is uh, the project that I'm currently working on. And then maybe a little primer on what uh, the differences are in solid state uh, versus magnetron cooking. After that, we can dive into the, you know, how we use simulation here from, uh, from a scientific and engineering standpoint, but also how we use this to distribute the simulation workload within a very diverse group of, of individuals with, um, you know, a lot of different backgrounds, uh, many of which are not, uh, you know, have very little scientific training. So we can uh, distribute the simulations with apps to, to them as well. <clears throat> so first, a little bit about ITW. The Food Equipment Group uh, here at ITW is um, the number one manufacturer of commercial food equipment in the world. Um, IBEX is one piece of this, which is uh, the IBEX oven is a commercial oven which features solid state microwave generation combined with convection heating. So a solid state, uh, what I mean is a solid state power amplifier instead of a magnetron uh, to generate the, the microwaves. And the advantages of using solid state can sort of be summed up uh, with a few points here. Um, why this makes a difference over a magnetron? Well, uh, Using a solid state power amplifier, you can actually vary the power, first of all. Uh, so you can actually change the amplitude of the output power versus, you know, using uh, like a magnetron will use um, a duty cycle to change the average power over time. We also have a very precise control of the frequency within the ISM bandwidth that we're using here, which is 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. And when, when you're using multiple sources with one cavity, you can uh, change the phase of one source with respect to the others. And so this is very useful in uh, creating different heating patterns in the food. Um, and all of this sort of leads to a uh, closed loop sort of uh, feedback system, right? So you're able to measure what you're putting into the cavity and you're able to measure what's coming out uh, either transmitted from one source or reflected from the cavity load uh, or food system itself. So when you do that, you can uh, teach the oven how to intelligently respond to the feedback that it's getting over time. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, you know, a, a magnetron, depending on the, the uh, how heavily it's used in a microwave can last from 12 to uh, 18 months, maybe. But when we're talking about solid state uh, power amplifiers for the generation of the microwaves, it's the lifetime can be many years. So this is a, a big advantage. Um, also, the power supplies for these uh, amplifiers uh, are on the order of tens of, of volts versus kilovolts for a magnetron. So this is another advantage. But really, you know, the, the customer uh, that we work with doesn't, uh, they, they want to know how these advantages translate into a meaningful uh, value for them. So we sort of sum it up uh, like this, you know, when you have uh, everybody's familiar with trying to cook uh, food in a microwave, right? And it's uh, sort of uh, can be chaotic, uncontrolled. Uh, what what the solid state uh, oven offers is customizable outcome, right? And so I, what I mean by that is, you know, with this closed loop feedback, you can develop uh, sophisticated heating algorithms to do all sorts of different uh, things that may be in the customer's interest. Uh, we have this continuous power uh, control. Um, all of these things lead to an improved consistency uh, and quality. And of course, the performance of the solid state generator doesn't really change over time. So throughout the life cycle of the product, you're going to have uh, no degradation in performance. So this is, from a customer point of view, the, the real advantage of, of using a solid state oven uh, versus a magnetron-based oven. Now, when we're, when we're talking about designing uh, this equipment, uh, I'm showing you here a uh, sort of a typical workflow for myself or other uh, of the scientists and engineers here. Um, you know, at, 
as you would expect, we start out with a, a, uh, a model that's going to be simulated with COMSOL multiphysics. Whether we create the model from scratch in COMSOL or we import it, maybe a step file from some other software, uh, <clears throat> we start out with the model here. Now, here at ITW in the IBEX group, we rely heavily on uh, MATLAB, uh, live link for MATLAB. Uh, and I personally, I use Python a lot also. Um, but the, the simulation flow here, you know, we'll, we'll usually design uh, and script all of our, um, uh, you know, uh, parametric sweeps, the analysis of the results, the post-processing, and even pre-processing, all in MATLAB, and run the simulations, uh, you know, with MATLAB, uh, live link for MATLAB, and then iterate back and forth between the simulation, uh, you know, using um, conditional loops, things like this, to, to iterate back and forth to get the result we want, whether it's um, an optimization of the cavity or whether it's a uh, design of a new algorithm that we're trying out. This is the typical uh, process that uh, that we will use. Um, and of course, when we're first starting, before you build anything, what you uh, want to do is investigate the basic physical phenomena. So for us, uh, for this particular product, we're talking about a um, a metal box that has multiple sources of uh, of RF energy, right? So the first thing we would want to look at is what are the modes that are going to resonate in this metal box, for example. Now we can calculate those analytically, but we can also uh, solve them in COMSOL. Um, and more importantly, what is the strength of the coupling of those modes uh, as expressed in the quality factor, for example? And how does the presence of the food change those modes, okay? So, you know, the loaded and unloaded quality factor we would look at, we would look at, uh, you know, in particular modes that maybe are very close in frequency. Uh, how does the present of, presence of the food uh, change which one gets excited and which one gets suppressed? Things like this, so the basic uh, physics of what's going on. Also, we would want to look at how changing the phase of multiple sources is going to affect the interference pattern within the food itself, which is responsible for the um, hot and cold spot uh, formation, right? It's this interference pattern. So these are a couple examples of the um, sort of the foundational work that we would do before we even build uh, anything, right? Um, once you've established this, um, it's important for us to determine how accurate the simulation is, um, you know, as compared to the real life experiment, right? And it just needs to be good enough for us. So we uh, maybe don't uh, focus, you know, we're not going to spend months trying to perfect the simulation to match the experiment. We want something that's good enough. And in this case, I'm showing you a, uh, a couple of examples of one frequency and phase combination here and here, different uh, frequency and phases. And this is a thermal image taken in the cavity, uh, looking down on this uh, sort of semi-discrete load here. Um, and, and while the um, you know, the heating pattern is not exact, right? You see some similarities. And once we establish that the, the, uh, the simulation represents our real life experiments uh, accurately enough, we can really speed up the, uh, the design process uh, and specifically the uh, algorithm development process in this way. This is uh, just to show you a little bit, this is a uh, you know, something that this, to get all of this data in an experimental way, so this is one phase and frequency combination at a time, running through hundreds of, of combinations. To get this in the, in the lab uh, would take you days or weeks. Whereas when we use the simulation, we can really weed out um, the combinations that may, may not be favorable for certain products or certain outcomes that, that we're interested in. And you know, sort of the culmination of this work is to develop these heating algorithms. So as I said before, the, the um, you know, we, we have this closed loop feedback system, right? So we're measuring what's going in, we're measuring what's going coming out or being reflected, transmitted, and where it's, where it's going to, right? So which source is it coming back to? And with this kind of information, we can use our simulations. Now this is similar to the last uh, slide, 
but we have two, two loads here. And this is the heating pattern for uh, one frequency with hundreds of combinations of, of fa different phases for the different sources. And we can extract this information. You know, the pictures are uh, uh, nice to look at, but what's really uh, interesting is the data behind this, right? So we extract this into MATLAB and we can test and train different models that uh, uh, may be worthy of further development for a certain algorithm that maybe is intended to do, have a certain outcome that customers may be uh, interested in. And so this saves us a lot of time in, in the lab to be able to simulate these things and not go down um, dead ends of algorithm development that may not end up panning out. Just through simulation, we can see uh, before testing any food. Now, this is from the scientific and engineering point of view, but we have um, a number of product specialists that uh, we work with. Um, we have a chef, for example, here that, um, you know, he's responsible for um, really uh, bringing the value differentiation to, uh, to our customers. And we found that, um, and he's found, and I found, that it's very helpful to be able to distribute this workload through applications uh, because there's certain questions that he wants answered, and he doesn't want to necessarily try uh, try it out in you know in the kitchen um, many times and waste a bunch of food. But if we can get a simple uh, approximate answer for, here's an example of a screenshot of one of the apps that I designed for him where he can look at how changing the oven temperature, um, how changing the airspeed, for example, how changing the size and the parameters of the food will change the, uh, will change the result in terms of the mass loss, as an example, right? Uh, chicken is, is why I'm showing this uh, video here because this kind of thing is very important to uh, retain the quality of the chicken and lose as little water as possible while still getting to the temperature that you need. Our customers also find this very uh, apps very valuable because, especially in this time where uh, in-person demonstrations are a bad idea, right? Uh, we can distribute apps to customers where they can play around with a lot of different parameters for themselves, and um, you know really see the value in a solid state, which is here on the left, versus a magnetron, which is here on the right. Uh, the power dissipated. We show them here. They can change the you know, the shape of the load, the size of the load, the position of the load, uh, the dielectric properties, the con dielectric constant, the loss factor, and they can compare and have a, a quantitative um, sort of uh, look that they maybe wouldn't get necessarily uh, even by cooking the, the things for themselves, right? That's uh, a little bit more subjective. But uh, in this way, they can really dig into something that they would not normally uh, look at. And we found a very positive feedback from our customers uh, with these applications. So just to wrap it up, um, the interaction between food and the electromagnetic fields is is very challenging to uh, to simulate. Um, you know, this is due to in part the uh, natural sort of inhomogeneity of the food, the uh, multiple components that the customers want to place in the cavity at the same time, each having different physical properties. Uh, or even a single component with, uh, or a single food item with multiple components where each of them has different properties. There's interfaces that you have to deal with uh, between the components. And of course, there's the customer interaction of where they're going to place the food. So there, there's a lot of complexity involved in, in trying to simulate food. Um, we found that console delta physics though, especially when combined with MATLAB and other uh, computing uh, languages has allowed us to understand much better the physics and more importantly, um, the, uh, the parameters that are the most in influential in what happens in the cavity, validate the simulations through experiment and develop heating algorithms that our customers find extremely valuable that really differentiates, differentiates a solid state oven from a magnetron oven. And of course, distribute the workload within our team here and uh, be able to educate customers with the applications.